Hey trumpet players, this is a short introduction to some trumpet warm-up play-along videos that go with the warm-ups on this website. Go to trumpetheroes.com, find the drop-down that says learn to play trumpet. From there you'll find trumpet warm-ups or something like that. Open that article, read it if you have time, and pick the right warm-up. You're going to want to print that off so that you don't have to look at this video and watch the music on the same screen. There's a bunch of words in that post. I'll cover the important stuff here as quickly as I can. These warm-ups in this video exist because I've had to say almost exactly the same thing to literally thousands of young trumpet players over the last 40 years. These kind of exercises are the way to get better at playing trumpet. Better range, better sound, better phrasing, better breath control, better everything. You'll even get a better lunch. Well, maybe not that. It's the way to go from wherever you are to better. You don't have to do these particular warm-ups, but you have to do something. You don't have to have this routine, but you need a routine. Why are we warming up anyway? I got three good reasons. First of all, you don't want to hurt yourself. So getting this business here ready to play, getting it used to the idea of being stuck up against a piece of brass is a good idea rather than just putting it on there and blasting away. All various kinds of sports and fitness activities involve some kind of warming up. Even if you're just going to run down the street, you might want to start by walking a bit and walking more briskly and then get the run going. You're going to last longer, you're less likely to hurt yourself, and the same is true of trumpet playing. Number two, we're going to use these warm-ups to work on expanding a variety of skills. So we're going to work on range, we're going to work on dynamic range, we're going to work on phrasing, we're going to work on slurring and tonguing and uh, even moving your fingers more quickly, getting that third valve slide to go. And we're going to do that by first bringing into focus the skills that you already have within the range that you have it and then expand that outward. Number three, we're going to provide a structure or a framework or a routine within which you can do all kinds of practicing. You can work on technical studies, you can work on beautiful phrasing studies, you can play songs, you can work on the music that you're supposed to be working on for your band class or whatever other ensemble you're playing with. And you can incorporate improvisation studies if that's a direction that you want to go in. So some goals that we want to keep in mind are first of all the Hippocratic Oath. First, do no harm. So anytime you feel pain, you feel like you could be hurting yourself or maybe something that you're doing like pulling hard or something like that is happening, stop, regroup, think about it. If you put the mouthpiece back on and you play a couple of notes and something hurts, stop. It's done. You're done for the day. If you feel a tingly, buzzy kind of feeling, well, that's okay. That's, that's just your mouthpiece and your lips getting used to each other. We're going to work your range. For most trumpet players, there is this idea that we need to get higher notes, let's get some high notes. We're going to work on that though by taking the range that you have and trying to widen it. So we're not only going to, to work it upward, we're going to work it downward because we're really dealing not just with strength but with flexibility. Of course, the wider your range gets, the trickier it becomes to find the right notes. That's what flexibility is all about and that happens here and with the wind. We're going to balance engaging and relaxing your muscle groups, particularly the muscles around here because we're not really used to doing a whole lot with those. Rather than thinking of making demands on our embouchure, what we want to do is prepare to meet the demands of whatever playing you're going to do in a given day. So these five warm-ups are not all at the same level. If you read the blog or if you just stay on with me here for a couple of minutes, you'll get that warm-up number one will lead you to warm-up number two. Warm-up number two will lead you to warm-up number three and so on. So choose the right one as your starting point and work your way upward through the next ones. The key word in the description and here is that you have to be comfortable in the range that is specified. If the highest open note you can play on the trumpet is this one, we call that a low C and you need warm-up number one, etc., etc., etc. 
If you can squeeze out a higher note, that's great, but that doesn't sound to me like it's comfortable. So always err on the side of what's easy. These warm-ups need to be played in a relaxed, easy manner. It should take years to work your way from warm-up one through warm-up five. I've tried to record each video so that you can play along. I'll count you in, let the video help you get the right notes, the right rhythms, even the right articulations, when to slur and when not to slur. Paying attention to those slurs and working on them might be the most important thing you can do in a warm-up to help develop strength and flexibility. When I run across a student with very limited range, the very first thing I do is find a fingering where they can hit more than one note. Often, if they're stuck at low C, I take them down to a low A. and find that they are able to play an E. Often not by slurring, they'll have to tongue it to get the wind speed to get that E, but that's a starting point. And now they're slurring, and now they're building strength, and they're building flexibility, and we can work them way up. And suddenly they're ready for warm up number two. That might take a couple of weeks of determined effort by that kid but their muscles are going to get better. Their body is going to figure out how to produce faster air and get those higher notes. It's going to happen. So what we've done is we've taken a trumpet that's this long and just shortened it and shortened it and shortened it and brought them up to the G. Speaking of shortening trumpets, you'll notice on a lot of these warm-ups that there are some fingerings written in. There are two reasons for that. First, these exercises are about how long is your trumpet. So some of the fingerings are for unusual notes that beginning band players simply don't run across. I've written those fingerings in so that you don't have to go look them up and come back to this video. But that's not an excuse to not learn them. You'll notice later on, I tend to leave them out. So you do have to learn them. And don't even get me started on writing in fingerings and note names. That's another whole rant and it's coming. It's coming for you. The second reason for writing in some fingerings is that I actually want to use the wrong fingerings for some notes. That's so that we can focus on slurring with our wind speed and our chops rather than using the different fingerings to help break the notes apart. I actually want these to flow like this, so we're gonna use the same fingerings. Some of these are notes that you already know, and I'm gonna ask you to play fingerings that seem unusual. When you look at it on the page, it makes sense. It actually makes them easier to play. Those unusual fingerings for some notes can be useful in your playing later. Some of them sound terrible, and you're never gonna to wanna to use them, except in your warm up because this is physical. There's no secret recipe to better playing but a good warm-up and regular daily practice are definitely ingredients. Once you've been using one of these warm-ups for a while, start making it your own. Start changing a few things. Add some ideas. If there's something that's not working for you, you could leave it out, although most things are in there for a good reason. If you find I'm not resting enough between the lines, pause the video and rest. Rest is good. Rest is our friend when we're warming up. Get out your pencil. Maybe write in a breath mark here or there. If you need a breath in the middle of one of these lines or if you want to maybe play it slower and that requires a breath, do it. Write it in. Write the word slower on it. You can erase it. After you've slurred a line, try tonguing it, especially those arpeggios towards the end of the uh, later warm-ups. Something like this. <laughs> can be tougher doing this. You want to be able to do both. You want the flexibility and you also want to be able to just pinpoint those things. In a flow exercise that goes like this, try playing the second note, that F sharp, without using the vowel. Just Bend the pitch down. Etc. 
some exercises that I've marked pretty slowly, you could play fast. You could really get carried away with a line like uh, this that is slow. You could play it like this. Or make something up. Play it five times. Do all, there's all kinds of things you can do without actually going to the next and harder warm-up. And certainly, by the time you've worked your way through all five warm-ups, you're going to have a lot of ideas of your own about what you do and don't need in your warm-up. Assuming that you've started on, say, warm-up two or warm-up three, just subscribe so that you can easily find the next ones because you want to be able to get back here and there's a gazillion things on the inner tube. You may not find your way back. Either that or just go back to trump trumpetheroes.com and scroll down, you'll find it. So, choosing which one of the five warm-ups to do is pretty simple. If the highest open note you can play with comfort and ease is this C, you want warm-up number one. If you can't get that note, if you're playing somewhere down around here, got a little work to do, but uh, I would start at Trumpet Heroes, scroll down to, there's a post about getting a low grumbly sound, which I think is what I just made. Start there and then come to warm up number one. If the highest open note that you can play comfortably is G, then you want warm up number two. If your highest comfortable note is C in the staff, then you want warm up number three. If your highest open note that's comfortable is E. Then you want warm up number four. And if you're comfortable with the G on the top of the staff, then you want warm up number five. If you're comfortable playing a high C, I don't know why you're here. The rest of us humans are going to get our trumpets out. We're going to print off our music and it's time to warm up. I'll see you in one of those videos soon.